Hello there. My name is Raja'i Busaila, and I am here with a new poem. And I hope you will like it. It's uh, a little bit different from other poems I have read in that it's a short poem, but it has a relatively long comment. So please put up with me. Uh, uh, the poem uh, I call on hearing of the contemplation to reintroduce the gray wolf into the U.S. It was quite a while ago, actually, I heard that. And when I heard this, I, I didn't like it. Honestly, I shudder. I shudder because uh, I love wolves. I love the wolf. And um, uh, I knew uh, the, the new proposal or the consideration is not going to work because, unfortunately, we are a society pretty unjust, pretty ruthless in its treatment of the environment in general and of animals and plants and water and all that. And the wolf especially uh, has been for ages has been uh, abused and, and treated harshly and, and unfairly. I have long stories to tell about my friendship with the wolf, but that's for another time, of course. But, you know, and uh, here is a poem which I wrote quite long after the, the, the hearing of the reintroduction of the wolf. But strangely enough, not much later, not much later, uh, uh, our president has decided that the wolf be taken off the uh, decent list and to be treated as the wolf had been treated poorly for a long time. Uh, here's the poem anyway and then let me say a couple of words after. Uh, after, after I, it's a short poem, right? Uh, <clears throat> on hearing uh, that the wolf was going to be, the grey wolf was going to be reintroduced uh, uh, to America. They brought him in. At the end of the journey, they told him that he was free and that he now should shade into the twilight so that each might make or remake the other home. But on sniffing the first air, he shook his head, he shivered an almost forgotten grunt which bounced against the hollow bosom of the dusk and with tail drooping turned back toward the cage they had brought him in from the inhospitable wide of the north. He did not need the power of prophecy in order to sense it all in one sniff at the new house of Atreus long before and after. No great twilight, only the fever, only the chill 
in the spine. It's a poem. Uh, now, the, the reference in the last stanza to the house of Atreus may need a little bit of comment here. Uh, um, in, in Greek mythology, in Greek mythology, the the Atreus dynasty, shall we call it, the Atreus dynasty uh, was somehow uh, uh, I don't know committing lots of crimes, uh, crimes of, of, of heinous nature, uh, eating, feeding children, their own children, to, to their parents, and uh, strange adulterous acts, and uh, um, uh, uh, treacherous, lots of treachery. This is the house of Atreus. Uh, now, <clears throat> it's a long family, and we can't go through that, but if you are interested, you could, you could go to the encyclopedia or to the Wikipedia, and you'd find that. Uh, here, I would, I would comment only on one uh, aspect or one story, shall we say, or event in, the, in this uh, history of the house of Atreus. Uh, uh, <clears throat> As I said, the family was so committed to, commi to committing the uh, irrational crime that the gods finally laid a curse on the whole family. So the, the house of Atreus was cursed. And if you see, if you read, you'll find that every member uh, has something awful, you know. Here, we want to, to concentrate on what the third stanza says, says stanza in the poem. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, <coughs> two brothers of, of this family are very famous in the books of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Uh, two of them, you know, Agamemnon, the general uh, of the uh, of the Greeks who went to conquer Troy, and his brother Menelaus. Uh, okay. Uh, well, the war at Troy was over. Troy was, of course, destroyed, and uh, uh, the men were killed, and the women were taken captive as concubines and as slaves. And, uh, Agamemnon, Agamemnon took Cassandra uh, for a concubine or for a slave. Cassandra, the princess, the, 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 yeah, the princess, the daughter of King Priam of Troy. He took her. Okay. And uh, went home with her um, to, I guess, show to his wife, Clytemnestra. Clytemnestra did not like that, and Clytemnestra uh, became the instrument 
of a revenge by the god Apollo against revenge against Cassandra, the Trojan princess. As I said, the, well, okay, we don't have to say as I said. So, uh, Cassandra was very beautiful and, and uh, uh, Apollo, the god Apollo, fell in love with her and he wanted her and she didn't somehow respond. She wouldn't respond and he kept insisting and all that and then she suggested that he do something for her um, to make her yield. He said, anything you want. And she said, give me the art of prophecy. He said, thou shalt have it. And Cassandra now was a priestess able to see through the past and through the future. However, she would not live to her promise. She denied Apollo what he gave her all this power for. She, you know, she wouldn't give it. And so he decided on his revenge. Now, gods, uh, Greek gods at least, if they give something, they cannot take it back. Uh, they can amend it though. And so Apollo could not, uh, could not take back his gift, but he amended to it this, that no one shall ever believe whatever Cassandra tells them. So, in other words, the prophecy, well, the, the, the power in the prophecy lost its usefulness, really, right? Because it was a useless, useless power. Useless power. Okay, she would tell her people such and such is going to happen, and such and such happened, but her people wouldn't believe her, and they would think, actually, she was mad. Okay, now she has been brought by Agamemnon to, uh, to his palace and, uh, to, you know, his wife Clytemnestra came and looked at her and made up her mind. First, Agamemnon goes to take a shower and she kills him in the, in the bathtub and Cassandra looks and sees the whole history of these people of the house of Atreus, the whole past and the whole future. She saw everything and then, uh, well, she was put to death by Clytemnestra. And so the wolf, sees all this, in other words. He, he looks at America and he says, no sir, that's not my house. This is another house of Atreus, full of sad and tragic and violent things. I don't want it. Send me back to the wild north where you brought me from. So I wish our president would reconsider and give more uh, uh, consideration of the environment with wolves and foxes, with trees, with water, with air, with, shall I say, people too. Well, but that's for some other time. That's the end. As I said, forgive me, 
It's a longer, much longer comment than the poem, but the poem, I think, needed it. Uh, so, you know, if you like it, I am glad. If you don't, I am sorry. And until next time, bye.